and welcome again to Tem Rinpoche's Paranormal Zone. My name is Lee Kim and I am your host. Today there will be a story by a young man who's 16, his name is CJ. He's just like any other teenager who's cool, he's part of a band and he plays music together and I guess they have what they call jamming sessions. If you look at him, there's nothing abnormal. But if you listen to his stories, it's pretty abnormal. So listen on, listen well, and think. My name is CJ and I'm 16 this year. I play the guitar and I play the bass and I have a band that we do covers of uh, rock songs, metal songs, yeah. I believe in this stuff uh, for quite a long time. Uh, I'm quite sure they exist because they're bound to be other life forms other than humans ourselves. And, you know. When I was uh, really young, a little kid, about three or four years old, I used to stay uh, with my grandma and my grandpa and we live in a small house in uh, Seremban. Uh, that place was, at first glance, you look at it, it looked dark, a little dark, eerie, but it was a nice house. Uh, so, I was really young. There used to be a lady uh, that she looked rather pale, a little pale, long hair, little white dress. She had a really hostile look, a uh, really hostile expression on her face, and I'm quite sure she knew I existed. Uh, she just looked at me all the time. She would be at a corner of the room, the house, you know, ceilings, top corners of the places, everywhere, all the time. Uh, I used to see her once in a while, once a week, twice a week, uh, on and off, not all the time. Uh, then, until one day, uh, one night, uh, you hear, um, you know, some someone hitting against the ground, uh, the soil or the grass, a spade or a stick maybe, stabbing the ground. Then it was really loud, middle of the night. Then uh, my grandpa opened the door and go out and check. But once you reach the bottom of the stairs, the noises just stop, silent. Then uh, we will go back upstairs and continue to sleep. Then uh, we will go back to sleep. Then 10, 15, 20 minutes later, the noises will come back and it would just be annoying. Uh, we never really knew what it was. It was just there. It appeared and disappeared. It didn't come every night. It was there for once, just like a lady, once a week, twice a week, on and off. And there was once, uh, I woke up in the middle of the night. I saw my grandma crying. I wasn't sure why. I was a little kid, so I didn't really ask anything. And I uh, flipped over and I looked out. Uh, the balcony, um, there was a corner of it, the lady was sitting there, just looked at me with a hostile expression. That lady, she just didn't seem really nice, not friendly at all. She looked at, oh, I'm going to strangle you, uh, with that look. And she had just a hostile expression on her. Then after a while, uh, she appeared more and more often. More and more often than, uh, I remember once, the I was at a, in front of an altar with uh, the Buddha Guan Yin and then I, I was just staring at it out of curiosity and then after a while I saw the statue move a little bit left and right swaying then uh, I kept on looking because that didn't really seem anything different because I was a little kid so I thought everything was just like that so I saw a uh, shape, a uh, shape of a small person phase out from the statue of the uh, Buddha Guan Yin, just but it was a dark human like shape it wasn't as big it was just as big as the statue of Buddha Guan Yin, and it just moved really close and it just really close to my face and I got really scared and it touched my face and I just <laughs> yelled and screamed and ran and I never really saw that thing again uh, after a while the lady came back the lady you see her on the ceilings, uh, she would hang there just like Spider-Man, like <laughs> against the corners. Um, and then she would just be around looking all the time. And then once she just jumped down and then she came really close to me and she kissed my cheek. Uh, she just kissed my cheek and then uh, that really spooked me. So I just cried all the time. And then uh, she didn't do that once. She did few times and then 
My grandma always said that I would cry for no reason, and then I would tell her that, oh, see, uh, there's a lady over there, and she just kissed me. Then, uh, then she'll be like, oh, don't be silly, you're just being a child, you know? Crazy stories and stuff, getting attention. After that house, uh, they moved out, and I moved back to stay with my mom and dad, and we lived in Puchong. Uh, it was also a uh, terrace house, and it wasn't that obvious that there was someone there. It was. Uh, I didn't really think that there was someone there until one day uh, I was alone. Me, my, I wasn't really exactly alone. Me, my brother, and uh, the maid at home. Uh, so the postman came to sign the post laju. Yeah, I had to sign it. So I didn't have an ID, so I couldn't sign it, and my maid couldn't sign it. So she was like, oh, "Is anyone at home?" I said, "Oh, no one's at home." And then no one's at home. Then uh, he was like, "No, oh, you're lying. Who's that up there?" Uh, she, he pointed at the balcony and he said, who, who, who's, that, who's that up there? And I was like, there's no one up there, there's only three of us. And because we were standing at the gate, and he went, there's no one up there, but no one up there. Ah, you're lying, ah, see, ah, the person up there, who's that, who's that? Ah, I'm sitting inside, ah, and I was like, there's no one up there, there's only three of us, there's no one else there. There's only three of us, and there's really no one else left. There's no cars in the house, nothing. There's only three of us, and he didn't believe us. He didn't really believe us, he just, I'll do you lah. I'll come back next time lah. And he just zoomed off in his bike. And after that, uh, my maid went up and checked because she thought it was weird. So she just ran upstairs and checked. There wasn't anyone there at all. It was really just the three of us there in the house. I remember there was also uh, a shadow figure because I had a double-decker bed pushed up against a wall. Uh, a corner actually pushed up against a corner, but the bed was there. And uh, once I walked down, uh, walked out to the toilet, and uh, yeah, I did my stuff. Then I came out. I remember I saw like a shadow. It was a man. It should be a man because it wasn't long hair. It was really tall. It was really long shadow. Uh, it stretched up all the way. His shoulders were above the double decker bed. You can see his head and his shoulders and build his arm. There, it was just a shadow, but it couldn't have been mine because the light was above the above the shadow, and there was another one uh, next to it, like on the side, far side of it. So it couldn't have been mine because there wasn't any lights behind me. Uh, and yeah, it, it seemed like it was just there, and I just really didn't think a lot of it because it was at night. I was tired, so I just went back to sleep. And after a while, I. I saw it again, but it didn't really do anything. It was just a shadow. It was a shadow of a man there. It wasn't there all the time. It would be there like once or twice. Then, yeah, after that, after a while, I just we just moved out of that place. I used to see not only the lady, uh, the other people too, because they just seemed like strangers. They looked like people, but uh, I would just sit there in the living room then. Uh, a man, or you just sit at the couch, a sofa, then my grandpa would move over and just lie down on the sofa and he would just disappear. And that didn't really seem strange to me because I was being a little kid, I would just think they were strangers and, you know, but there were a lot of them, like, not all at once, but there would be two or maybe three, but they weren't old or young kids, they were just middle-aged people, most of them, then, uh, yeah, they just seemed normal, like normal people, but I didn't really see them, seen them before and I never saw them again. Yeah. They never really did much, actually, they just walked around. To them, it, it, seemed, like, it seemed like they were walking in an empty house, just roaming around. Um, they would sit down somewhere, um, just stand, but they wouldn't say anything, they never really said anything. They just, you know, they just walked around, blank expression on their face, just walked around the house, that's all. To CJ, they are out there. He's seen it so often for so many years in his life. They are normal. They are part of everything. They do exist. They are out there. So, whether you believe it or not, seen it before or not, think. Some things we see may not be real, and some things that are real we may not see. So, have you been kissed? <laughs>